high-powered multi-use cars often have a lot of problems with the clutch. Uh, if it's not the clutch, it's your left leg. A lot of times the clutch that can take a lot of power has a really stiff diaphragm spring and a lot of clamping force so it won't slip. This means the clutch pedal effort is high. High effort, your leg gets tired, uh, it slows your shifts and makes the car very difficult to drive for long periods of time, like in bumper to bumper traffic. Uh, another thing about like a really powerful clutch is typically they have like a light switch engagement and which also makes them uh, very hard to drive and a lot of times they judder a lot. Um, a lot of these clutches are only designed for going all out and when you're having to drive slowly like uh, on the highway, uh, they can get really annoying. Lately, we've been having some experiences in some of the time attack cars we work on, and we ran into this brand of clutch that was new to us. Um, it's X-Clutch, and what w amazed us is uh, we had these fully raced uh, time attack cars with buttery smooth, really soft, easy to drive clutches that could take a lot of power. Because of this, uh, we had to get one of these for our own project STI. Uh, this thing will make a lot of power and uh, it also gets driven quite a bit so it can't have too many annoying characteristics. So why is the X-Clutch so good? How could it take a lot of power and be so easy to drive on the street? Let's look inside. So we'll look into the X-Clutch starting with the pressure plate. Uh, first off, the pressure plate has 50% more clapping force than the stock pressure plate. Uh, this is done through a stiffer diaphragm spring, but it has a very similar to stock uh, pedal effort. And the way X-Clutch did this is they moved the fulcrum that the pressure plate diaphragm spring uh, rides over more to the outside of the uh, pressure plate stamping. The fulcrum is this uh, kind of ridge that you see stamped into the outside of the pressure plate cover. Normally it's more inboard, but it's outboard, so the uh, throwout bearing has more leverage to um, bend the diaphragm spring. The other cool thing about the X-Clutch is it uses a pull-type throwout bearing. Uh, this is the same as the stock STI uh, clutch. Uh, what it means is the throwout bearing pulls instead of pushes. What's cool about a pull type is when the clutch is engaged, uh, a pull type doesn't have the problem of the flex of the pressure plate cover reducing the clamp load because it's pulling from the opposite direction. Um, a lot of high performance cars use a pull type and it generally makes the pressure plate about 15% more efficient. So for the pedal effort, you get about 15% more clamp load just because the uh, cover doesn't uh, flex. A lot of performance Subaru clutches require you to convert your car over to a uh, push type pressure plate, which isn't so good. Uh, you have to get an all new slave cylinder and a different mounting bracket, I think from a WRX. And uh, you lose the advantage of the pull type pressure plate, but the X-Clutch lets you keep the pull type diaphragm spring. Another feature of the pressure plate that helps keep it streetable is um, the uh, friction ring has a strap drive. Uh, you can see the, it has several of these drive straps around the outside. A strap drive is kind of like a conventional clutch. Uh, the advantage of that here is most multi-disc uh, clutches, the uh, pressure ring is just floating and moves around and it can make like a loud chinging noise and a lot of uh, rattling when you're driving or when you push the clutch in, which is annoying. But the uh, strap drive straps keep the uh, pressure ring um, centered and prevent from bouncing around making noise. So the next part of the X-Clutch system is the flywheel. The X-Clutch flywheel is made out of a forged chrome molly billet, so it's really strong, has good grain flow, a lot of burst strength, and it's lightweight. It weighs about 11 pounds. The stock Subaru flywheel is about 19. Um, you don't want to go super light on the Subaru if you're keeping the stock engine management because super light flywheels on the Subaru tend to trigger multi-cylinder misfire codes and 
through trial and error, um, a lot of Subaru tuners have found that about 11 pounds uh, can give you better response and not trigger the uh, check engine light. Uh, the flywheel also has uh, holes to give it additional light uh, lightness around the periphery and the center. The ones around the periphery kind of help the uh, inertia a lot better. <laughs> and it has these machined in guides for the rest of the clutch system. The next part for the clutch is the first disc. So the first disc has this uh, built-in sprung hub. Uh, what's kind of neat about the X clutch is the, it has a single sprung hub. Uh, a lot of twin disc clutches that try to have a sprung hub have two separate sprung hubs. And the thing about that is it adds a lot of uh, weight you don't want to have a lot of weight on your clutch discs because uh, that makes it a lot harder on synchros and it shifts a lot slower. So you get all the advantages of the sprung hub with all of the weight of a single sprung hub, which is pretty cool. Now the sprung hub is pretty, pretty heavy duty and pretty strong. I mean, it's pretty darn beefy, so you're not gonna have a problem with the hub breaking up and the springs falling out like you do in a lot of performance clutches. The sprung hub is also good on a clutch that you want to be more refined for street use because the sprung hub absorbs a lot of uh, drivetrain harmonics so you won't hear as much transmission noise, uh, you won't have as much transmission vibration. Uh, it makes the clutch a lot less jerky and juddery when you engage it when you're just driving around like in bumper to bumper traffic. And last of all, it cushions the drivetrain when you do like hard shifts like on the track. Uh, the this material itself is an organic material reinforced with uh, Kevlar and uh, metal wire. Now uh, organic is like not too sexy, it's the stuff that you put in regular clutches. But the main advantage is it's smooth and it's not too abrasive, so it doesn't wear the other components of the clutch. The disadvantage is it uh, doesn't have a lot of thermal capacity and it doesn't have much burst strength. Uh, bursting is when you work the clutch too hard, maybe spin it too fast, and the friction material actually bursts off the, um, the disc and turns into like a big wad of junk, basically. To give the clutch friction material more burst strength, it's reinforced with strands of Kevlar and you can see like some metallic elements in there. This kind of holds the organic material together, makes it a lot stronger. It also conducts heat away from the surface, which gives it a greatly expanded temperature range. Um, the material is both bonded and riveted to the disc and very strong but on the other hand, it's very smooth. Next, you can see the disc kind of like goes down here in the flywheel. And the next thing is the uh, floater plate. The floater plate uh, goes in between the two discs and it engages into the flywheel, so it acts like another friction grabbing surface. Um, that's one of the cool things about a twin disc is you have twice the clutch area to handle the same amount of power. It's one of the reasons why uh, the, the twin disc can uh, take so much power compared to a single disc while maintaining a reasonable clutch pedal. This uh, floater is unique. Uh, if you can see here, it has these uh, undercuts on either side of the drive lugs. And what that does is it gives a place to, uh, for clutch debris and any kind of wear debris to go into. This way the floater can always be free to move. You don't need to worry about debris jamming it and causing erratic clutch action. Uh, it's a unique feature that I haven't seen before in the twin disc, but um, I presume it works really well. Now the floater drops right in, which uh, brings you to the next disc. The ne next disc is kind of like the first. It has the semi-metallic Kevlar organic friction material and it has these uh, drive lugs on the inside. The drive lugs engage with the lugs on the sprung hub like so and it all fits in there. Really a lot of engagement points on the inside and the outside so it's a lot less things um, 
the load is spread out, the tolerances are tighter, and it's a lot less rattly, unlike your typical twin disc. And next, the cover goes right on down. And it bolts all together. Um, so this clutch can, on this particular model of car, can take about 800 horsepower, and it's as smooth as silk. Now this clutch makes clutches for a whole bunch of applications from LS to imports and I think we're going to be using a lot more of these on our high powered builds that require a high degree of refinement. There's other cool things that come in the X-Clutch kit. Uh, they give you a new uh, throwout bearing and a new pilot bearing and what's really cool is the clutch alignment tool. Now this is a real metal one, not like the plastic ones that typically come with a clutch kit. I know, I know with myself, I found that the little plastic alignment tools don't align the clutch all that, all that well sometimes. And there's a lot of fill farting around when you're trying to get the uh, input shaft of the transmission in there. But uh, X-Clutch gives you a precision, fully machined metal uh, alignment tool that you'll probably keep and use on every car uh, afterwards. So if you like this technical content and you want to see more, be sure to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. It really makes a difference and we appreciate it. Also, if you want to read all about it and even more, you can go to MotoIQ.com and check out our in-depth articles of all kinds of performance stuff. If you want us to work on in your car, uh, go to MotoIQ.com and uh, click the Garage Services button and we'll get back to you. Anyway, we'll see you next time and talking about more performance parts.